I will tell you one really funny thing that I had to do. It wasn't on the show uh, on camera, but Rachel was going to have her first child, right? Yeah. And and she was pregnant in the show, and she was playing the Wraith. Uh, she played a Wraith Queen, right? When she was in the makeup? Yeah. Yeah, the Queen, season five. Yes. Right. So yes. she was really pregnant at the time, right? Okay. And she was going to have the baby imminently. And all the girls in the makeup trailer were making these um, um, be- a beautiful book for her. And everyone was writing stuff in the book and you know, really lovely stuff. And, and they kept on saying, Paul, what are you going to do? You know, I, got, I think something good. I got to think something good. And so Rachel had kind of shorter hours at the time because she was, you know, yeah. they, they were working hard, right? They were working, So yeah. she left it and said, I got it. I got it. So Jason Momoa was there. I go, you got to help me do this. And he's like, great. Rachel had an amazing stunt double that looked just like her, right? Uh, amazing. So what happened is when when Rachel left, I got all of the stunt doubles wig and everything, um, Rachel's outfit, the pregnant belly. I put it all on. The girls did my makeup like Rachel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did you know this? And I so this. I got Jason Momoa and I got Rachel's fighting sticks. And we did a photo shoot. Um, I can't remember what the pictures. That's so funny. I can't remember what took the pictures. Anyway, we went out there, and I'm fighting Jason as Rachel in this makeup, and I had the sticks and everything. And then I go into her trailer, and I said, "Mama's tough." And I took a picture of her fighting with Jason, and then "Mama sexy." And then we're we're on. I'm in Rachel's trailer, lying on her bed with my hand like this, and, and Jason's there beside me. And then and then um, Mama's drunk. And I took a bunch of stuff from craft services and I had to like uh, get some empty beer bottles and stuff. And I poured chips all over my pregnant belly and all these different pictures of me, you know, and, you know, mommy sensitive. I'm crying, you know, and I, I so I took all the pictures and put it in the very last page of her book. Right. And all these captions in it. And so the next day, Rachel comes in and Rachel's very sweet and she's hyper pregnant. So she's really sensitive. So she's going through the book and I'm, I make sure I'm scheduled at the same time as her. I'm like two chairs down and I can hear her and she's going through the book and, and she's like, Oh my God, Oh my God. She has Kleenex. Oh my God, you guys are so sweet saying oh, you're going to be the best mom ever. And I'm like, Oh, Rachel, she goes, shut up, Polly. And she's making fun of me. And she's going through, Oh, she's reading all these different things from people. She keeps on reading. She keeps on reading and I'm waiting for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. And she gets to mine. She's like, <laughs> And it was the best reaction. <laughs> so good. So good. And I, I'm like, yes, I got you. And she was the dying. It was so funny. And I still have those pictures somewhere. Which I oh, you not. do? Yeah, <laughs> she I tore them out and gave them back to you? <laughs> yeah. uh, we may have to get them in a few years, uh, depending on how long this goes. <laughs> yeah. Romaine, T-H-B-L-T. Romaine Thbolt. Romaine Thbolt. Ro- Romaine? Romaine. And then it's all in one word, T-H-B-L-T. I'm sorry, man. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Romaine, question for Paul. What is your take on the wee turtles, the wee bit turtles versus wee bit tortoises? Um, I don't know about the tortoises, but the wee baby turtles. Um, I love that aspect, having the baby turtles. It was so cute. The turtles. You know? I probably killed them. The wee baby turtles. And the, the Rodney, I'm sorry, Rodney, you can watch the turtles afterwards, you know, when I was leaving, you know, it was so <laughs> sad, but it was such a sweet thing. The funny thing about that, I mean, listen, I loved having the fact that Beckett had these little baby turtles. It was just another little character thing about him, you know, and uh, I think he was such a sweet guy, you know what I mean? And he had these wee baby turtles, but um, people started giving me turtles, right? I got turtle chocolates, which I love, <laughs> and then um, turtle doilies. People would make little doilies wow. stuff. So I, I had... So many stuffed turtles, I can't even tell you. And I'd bring them home after the convention. My wife was like, what's with the turtles? Yeah. <laughs> like all these turtles. Uh, you know, I'd have, like, I had turtle teapots, turtle mugs, everything. People would just give me turtle shirts. And so um, thank you for that. But then I said, I finally, I said, you know what? Instead of turtles, Beckett likes scotch. So that <laughs> he started giving me. <laughs> and, and, you know, when Flanagan says the same thing, you know, he's the Irish and the Scottish, right? And, you know, Joe and I share a birthday, right? Yes. And so one of our conventions. One of us will never be get a bottle of scotch. Someone will give us a, as a lovely gift, and we much appreciate it. And Joe's like, Paul, I got my scotch. I'm like, well, thank you very much. I got mine as well. And, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a wee dram. So, because um, you can't drink the turtles. <laughs> no, you can't drink turtles, definitely. But the scotch is definitely appreciated. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, if anyone wants yeah. to know what to get Paul on his birthday, it is scotch. Free yeah, and Joe. And Joe. Birthday. Free Spirit 999, a.k.a. Jen. Question for Paulie. I think this is Jen Kirby. 
Uh, nice. Question for Polly. What advice would you give to anyone trying to make it into this industry as a freelancer, novice actor with no training and no agent? Uh, especially in COVID right now, what what uh, steps do you advise that they take? When I remember Jen Kirby, she's lovely. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a tough one. You know, it, it really is in this climate. It's very, very difficult. Uh, I often tell people, I think you have to do um, as many independent, independent projects as you can. Like do whatever you, you can. Find, find groups of like-minded people that start doing short films together and write your own stuff and create create your work. Don't wait for the phone to ring. Create, create, create your work. Um, you know, find people that can you can do scenes with. Try to try to get something off the ground, make a film. Especially if you're starting off a little bit older, you know, like you're not a, like a, a 18 year old or something, you know, which is a little bit easier to get into business. Um, because what you're dealing with, if you start a little bit later, you, you, it's it's very competitive. You know, you're looking at people with resumes as long as your arm, you know. So it's tricky. Yeah. So the best thing is to do it. Um, as best you can, but always have a backup, you know, because it, it's a tough business. And I never learned until, you know, in the past, I say five years or so, you know, the term they say the business can eat you alive, you know, and I see that, you know, I remember young actresses that I work with and, and actors, for example, you know, that were so passionate and had that sparkle behind their eyes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the business can really beat you down, you know, it can really take it out because it's basically essentially business based on rejection, right? So you have to have a very thick skin and you can't take things personally. And it's very hard not to sometimes because it is you walk in the room and, you know, almost immediately and you ask any producers that have done things. And I, I produce things and I know the feeling, you know, when someone walks in the room immediately, you're like, okay, I can see them playing it. Now let's see if they can act, you know, right. because there's a judgment call the second right. you walk in. It's and subjective. It's Casting is subjective. It's completely subjective. And it could be as simple as my eyes are blue and the kid they already cast his eyes are brown. So we need, you know, it can be that. So we, he's not going to work out because we already got a mom that is, you know, yeah. someone's got that type of thing. Um, so you, all you can do is give him a little piece of yourself and uh, throw it out there. But um, do as many plays as you can, you know, do as many independent films as you can. Film festivals are a great way to get recognized if you, you know, get your work out there so people see you and and just create it. You know, I often tell young actors, too, the best way, if you don't have an agent or anything like that, and I, I'm doing this with a friend of mine's son in Toronto right now, mm. and uh, what you should do is you should put three, two to three scenes, contrasting scenes, maybe 45 seconds long, not very long, like a comedic scene, a dramatic scene, and something sort of contemporary, basically monologues to give people an understanding of what, how you can act. Because if you don't have a demo reel and you have no resume and you go to meet an agent, how, how do they know how to sell you? It's like selling a car. You need to know what you have. So you have to educate them in a sense. You have to show them what you, what you got. So you, you got to show them a right. comedic model, show them a dramatic, show them your range. So when they feel comfortable, but submitting you for different things so they can sell you. So you got to make yourself marketable somehow. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a great way to get an agent doing that. I mean, it's not a professional demo reel, but again, I would say nine out of 10 kids I asked to do that, they don't do it. So that's the thing. When I was young, when I started acting, we didn't have it. I didn't have a demo reel. I memorized three different monologues and I would go into agents and I would say, uh, cause you don't know what I can do. I said, I'm going to do these monologues for you. And the agents would be like, Oh, almost uncomfortable. And I'm like, I don't care because I, you need to know what I can do. Yeah, I need to show you some range. Me. And you need to sell me. So I got to show you what I got, you know? And I don't think people these days, it, it's very hard. You, you know, that's the easy way out. It's like, no, I'm really, you, you know, if you're a girl, you're really pretty or whatever, or you're a guy and you're really handsome. Like, that's fine. But like, what, what can you do? You know, acting, you have to see you do something. So you got to show them something. And that's how I did it. And nowadays with the technology, you can put little scenes together and almost make a demo reel look really good and then mm -hmm. show them that. But make it short because people have very small attention spans. That's my... Um, device that's true too thanks for watching this clip from dial the gate you can find the full live stream shows on our youtube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule see you on the other side